Good morning. Welcome to the Noble Network College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but they will be here for the entire session to answer your questions. My name is Raina and I will be your facilitator, but before we get started, we have a few housekeeping items to go over. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button at any time to type your questions to the panelists. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so you can check out our schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash noble. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, the University of Arizona. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us to learn more about our awesome schools. My name is Emily Martinez, and I am the admissions recruiter with the University of Arizona for you and for your school. I'm actually a regional rep. I am based in Chicago, but I serve as your connection to everything Arizona. So I'm just going to very quickly go through and give you a high level overview of Arizona and all that we have to offer. University of Arizona, our main campus is located in Tucson, Arizona. We are on the southern end of the state. We are a larger university. We have about 36,000 undergraduate students, um, still able to offer a very personal educational experience. Our average class sizes are between 15, or 21 and 29 students, and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1. So we are able to offer you a lot of great opportunities because we are that larger university. We have a very diverse student body. We have students coming from every single state in the US. In fact, Illinois is our third highest recruited state. So we get plenty of students from the Midwest making their way over to Arizona. So why do so many students choose to study at Arizona? It's because we offer big time opportunities. We have proven success in our students. When people look at us from the outside, they see all that we have to offer. We have been ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world. We've also been ranked in the top 10 schools, public schools in the West. We've been named a best value college, a best college. We've been named a top 20 uh, research institute. We are actually ranked in the um, top percent of um, research institutions in the nation. We are part of the Association of American Universities, which is an exclusive title given to only 65 schools like Harvard, Yale, UC Berkeley, and the University of Arizona. Um, so again, plenty of opportunities across all areas, across all disciplines at the University of Arizona and proven success with our high rankings and recognitions. Another good benefit at being a large university is that we do offer a lot of opportunities in terms of academic programs. So we actually have over 300 different academic programs to choose from. Um, some of our more popular programs include anything business. We are nationally ranked in the top 20 for public business colleges. We also are nationally recognized for our College of Education and College of Engineering. Very well known for our College of Fine Arts, specifically our dance program is one of the best in the country. Also very strong in the physiology, health sciences, medical sciences. Our nursing program is also highly ranked. A lot of really great resources between the two medical schools that the University of Arizona has to offer. So we literally have just about any program to meet your educational needs. Outside of academics, we have a very active student life. You can imagine with 36,000 students on our campus, there's always something going on. We have over 600 different student clubs and organizations to choose from. They range from Greek life to academic associations, to social and special interests, to student leadership and student government, to arts and culture, to athletics and recreation, and everything in between. So again, you're never gonna be bored on our campus. You're gonna always find something to do. We are very competitive for our athletics. We are part of the D1 Pac-12 Conference. So again, very competitive, a lot of school spirit, school pride built around our student athletes and our student teams. So something you could definitely get, get involved with and take pride in. Tucson is very much a college town. In fact, it has been named a, one of the best college towns in the country. Um, the heart of the city is definitely the University of Arizona. Everything you need as a student is right there and available to you. Um, it is a very sunny, laid back city. Uh, being from the Midwest, my favorite thing to point out is the gorgeous Tucson weather. It is a yearly average temperature of over 83 degrees, over 300 days of sunshine. What's not to like about that? Plenty of activities to do either on our campus or in the area. 
Our campus is flat, one square mile. Everything you need is there, but we are surrounded by some desert mountain landscape. So outdoor recreation is huge in the Southwest region. We have some school traditions built around the mountains in the area. Um, a lot of our student clubs and organizations plan uh, trips to go different to go hiking up a different mountain peak. So plenty of new things to try. Um, we also have your basic amenities um, and your social entertainment opportunities. The city of Tucson offers different concerts, festivals, farmers markets, the campus itself. We have a movie theater. We also have a Broadway theater on campus. So really opportunities are endless for entertainment and social opportunities. Can't say it enough. You're never going to be bored in Tucson. We also do offer on-campus housing for students. Our housing uh, requirements are really unique in the fact that we have none. Um, that Arizona, as a first-year student, you can choose to live on or off campus. Completely your choice, there are no requirements. Um, more than 70% do choose to live on campus their first year, so we do encourage it, but it's not required. Also, you get to choose where. All 23 of our dorms house first year through senior, so you get complete freedom and flexibility in choosing where you're comfortable in living and what makes the most sense for you. Housing does require a separate application. You are not guaranteed a spot in uh, uh, on-campus housing, so you do have to actively apply, um, but definitely something to consider to really enhance your college experience. Hopefully you've heard of a lot of exciting information and are eager to apply. Applying to the University of Arizona is very simple. We accept the Common App, the Coalition App, or our own institutional application. We do not require essays. Letters of recommendation are not considered. We are test optional. Personal statements are also optional. When we evaluate students for admission, we look for some very specific criteria. You can see a list of classes here. These are known as the Arizona Board of Regents core course competencies. We are looking to make sure that you will have completed these classes by the time you graduate high school. And it's a very simple evaluation process based on these core classes and your core GPA. We do also offer merit scholarships, which you're automatically considered for when you apply to the university. If you're interested in visiting campus, definitely come check us out. And we have plenty of options online. Um, but thank you so much for, for tuning in. And I will be in the chat in case you have any questions. Thank you, University of Arizona. And just a reminder to all of our panelists, please put your contact information in the chat to everyone. And next up, we have the University of Missouri. Hi everyone, my name is Carly Stern with the University of Missouri. Um, I am one of our three Chicago regional representatives here in the area. I do have with me my colleague Siobhan, another one of our reps, so she'll be monitoring that chat box. But as we kind of start things off here, um, talk a little bit about, oh, I don't know why this isn't going through. Sorry about that. Um, We can see your screen share. Okay, it wasn't letting me go to the next slide, so I'm gonna, let's see if we can do this this way. Um, okay, great, sorry about that. So a little bit about where we're located. So we're in Columbia, Missouri, right in the center of the state, just about two hours both ways from St. Louis and Kansas City. So lots to do in those large cities, but lots to do in our town of Columbia as well. It's very much a college town, home to hiking, biking, and running trails, music venues, coffee shops, restaurants. There are tons of things for our students to do outside of the classroom. Talking about though a little bit more of our university as a whole, we have about 30,000 total students, about 23,000 of those make up our undergraduate students. We have Tigers coming from every county in Missouri, all 50 states in the US and over 120 countries. You'll be meeting a lot of really great people when you are coming to our campus. We are also the land grant and AAU institution for the state of Missouri. This means that you'll be getting a top tier research education at that land grant price. Now, when it comes to actually applying to us, we are available both on the Common App or through our own institutional application. Neither one is preferred, whatever is easiest for you. We allow students to apply with the test score or test optional. That criteria can be found on our website. And we are on what's called rolling admissions, meaning that you will hear a decision about 
of between two to four weeks time after you actually submit that application starting on August 1st. Now, when you actually get to campus, we have over 300 different degree programs that our students can choose from. Anything from journalism to business to engineering, education, nursing, but our most common one being undecided. So if you're not sure what you wanna do yet, you'll be in great company. We also have over 600 different student clubs and organizations. Anything from a Quidditch team to intramural sports to Greek life to religious affiliations to academic organizations. There are something for everybody, no matter what your interests are. We are also a D1 school located in the SEC. That's the Southeastern Conference. We have 20 D1 sports on our campus, which is a really great way to get involved. Sports are a huge part of our campus life and something students really like to take pride in. Now, when you're actually talking about what your academics will look like, we like to pride ourselves on what we call the Missouri method. This is our approach to hands-on learning, making sure you're doing more than actually reading out of a textbook in the classroom, but actually getting to experience your degree firsthand. A couple examples you see here, that bottom right-hand photo, that is KOMU, which is the only NBC affiliate station ran by students in the nation, and our journalism students are running that completely. Our nursing students are graduating with over 700 hours of clinical experience. We have education students getting in the classroom as early as their sophomore year. Business students with a 100% internship placement rate, you will have tons of experience outside of the classroom in the degree program you choose. Here's a couple of examples of what those classroom settings might look like. Lecture settings, outdoor classrooms, the library lab settings, our students are kind of getting that full round experience in their classrooms as well. Now, with all of that, we want to make sure our students are being supported. We have a student success center and a career center located in the heart of our campus, home to group tutoring, private tutoring, a writing lab, resume and cover letter help, LinkedIn photo opportunities. So really trying to make sure that you're getting that support you need in the classroom, but also as you're preparing to maybe get a part-time job or an internship as well. We also have social support centers located on our campus. Whether or not you identify with any of the ones you see on the screen here, they're great ways to get involved on our campus. They each hold their own center, so an actual physical space that you can visit, and great events that they host throughout the year as well. A couple of things when it comes to scholarship opportunities. So we have merit-based awards. Those are going to be um, com completely automatic, meaning when their application comes to us, you're screened for them. They're awarded all throughout your senior year. When it comes to our competitive scholarships, they will have a December 1st deadline. Missouri is also fortunate in that we offer a great residency program. There are five steps that you would follow during your freshman year. So at the start of your sophomore year, you'd be a Missouri resident, which cuts your tuition by about $18,000. So definitely a huge money saver for those out-of-state students. Here's a couple images of some fun spots on campus. Those two photos on the left-hand side are going to be of our rec complex. That is the Lazy River and Whirlpool, and then the cardio room. On the right-hand side, you can see a couple more fun things. Um, Paint the M is a tradition on campus, but another really great tradition I always like to talk about is homecoming. Mizzou is the birthplace of homecoming, so if you got to celebrate that in your high schools, you can thank us for that. Um, we're in high school, it typically lasts a week. On our campus, it lasts an entire month, so a great celebration. We also offer in-person and virtual visits. So whether or not you're able to visit us, um, you can do so in person or online. The last but not least, I'll put this up, but I'll also add it in the chat box. Here are the three contact information for all of our Chicago regional representatives. And I will pass it on to the next school. Thank you, the University of Missouri. Now we have the University of Iowa joining us. Good morning, everyone. My name is Erin Monroe. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission for the University of Iowa. I'm also a proud alum. So the University of Iowa is located in Iowa City, Iowa. We're over on the eastern side of the state. We are a large public D1 Big Ten institution. Our home is a unique blend of high art and small city where our town and campus come together to make one of America's definitive college towns. If you look closely at this picture of campus, you'll see a river that organizes our campus into an east and a west side. 
The building with the gold dome in the center of the photograph is the old Capitol building. It's the original capital of the state of Iowa before it moved to Des Moines in 1847. And that is going to be the site of campus where primarily our undergraduate students are going to be spending their time. So all of your courses are really within about a five to 10 minute walking distance of the old Capitol building. Um, on the west side of campus, that's primarily going to be home to our University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. We have one of the largest teaching hospitals in the nation and our athletic events. What's not in this photograph is going to be downtown Iowa City. We are consistently ranked as one of the top college towns in the nation. Our students have some amazing opportunities to really engage with our community, have jobs and internships, explore venues for the arts, a variety of different performances and festivals. There's over a hundred different restaurants, shops, places to hang out with your friends in the downtown area. Our um, college has just over 31,000 students on our campus, representing 45 states and 40 countries. We have a really large out-of-state population, and the most populous states on our campus are going to be Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and California. We, our first-generation college students make up about 21% of our first-year class. On this slide you can see the average GPA and test scores of students who apply to the University of Iowa. These are not our requirements but really show the caliber of students that are attracted to the University of Iowa. We offer over 200 areas of study and some of our most popular majors for incoming first-year students are business, an open major, engineering, psychology, sports and recreation management, nursing, studies related to the health sciences like biology, chemistry, health and human physiology, um, and we have an internationally recognized English and creative writing program. So how do you join the Hawkeye family? We have an early action deadline of November 1st and we make admission decisions on a rolling basis. You'll receive a timely admission decision in about two weeks of submitting a complete application. Applying with an ACT or SAT score does have students go through the RAI formula, stands for Regents Admissions Index. We'll calculate a score using your test score, your GPA, and the number of core classes completed through the end of your senior year in the subject areas of math, science, social studies, English, and world language. If your score is above a 255 for out-of-state students, you're automatically admitted into the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We are test optional for students applying for fall 2023. If you apply test optional, we will request a submission of your personal statement and your high school transcript and conduct a holistic review. We offer direct admission to the Tippy College of Business, College of Engineering, College of Public Health, College of Education, and the College of Nursing. We also offer an assured admission program to our College of Pharmacy. If you're interested in any of those programs, we encourage you to connect with us on our Office of Admissions website. With an application for admission, you're also automatically considered for merit scholarships, and we have competitive scholarships that students can submit applications for as well. Collaboration over competition really defines Iowa's academic culture. We work to remove the barriers between the arts and sciences, giving students a full range to explore. We have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. 33% of our students participate in research where they work with professional faculty and staff. We offer study abroad programs where students go abroad each semester to more than 70 different countries. There are student support services for your academics and well being, like supplemental instruction, embedded mental health counseling, and some of our most central campus locations. When our students are outside of the classroom, they're engaged and learning through their experiences. There are over 500 different student organizations for you to join, ranging from academic based organizations, intramurals, sports, and clubs fraternity and sorority life, multicultural and religious organizations, and many, many more. We're a school that's rich in pride, spirit, and tradition. There are over 400 performances that take place each year in the Division of Performing Arts for students who, yes, of course, are majoring in those art forms, but also are non-majors. We have 21 teams that compete in NCAA Big Ten Division I athletics. Um, if you don't know about our tradition, the Iowa Wave, I suggest you give it a Google. It's a really powerful thing to be a part of. 
If you are interested in learning more, please feel free to connect with us through a variety of our virtual platforms and visit options. We are offering in-person visit experience as well, and I'll provide our contact information in the chat. Go Hawks! All right, hi everyone. I'm gonna share my screen with you real quickly. All right, um, so hi everyone. My name is Laura Shutt and I'm the Associate Director of Admission, Chicago-based regional representative for Butler University. Uh, Butler is a private mid-sized university located in the city of Indianapolis in Indiana. Um, as you can see here in this photo, the university is about five miles north of the downtown area. Um, so campus itself is very residential, um, really kind of tucked away in the neighborhood, so giving you that true campus feel. Um, and also Indianapolis is about a three hour drive from the Chicago area. We have just under 4,500 undergraduate students and additionally around 500 or so grad students. Um, however, our focus is truly on that undergraduate student experience. I think you would find that our size in many ways gives you that small school feel with a lot of big school opportunities. With that average class size right at 24 and that student to faculty ratio of 12 to 1, you'll find that your classroom experience is very student focused, very engaging. Your professors will know you and you'll get to know your classmates as well through lots of discussion and group projects. We do have six different academic colleges that focus on communication, education, liberal arts and sciences, pharmacy and the health sciences, visual and performing arts and business. Um, for any of you, though, who are undecided as to what you want to study, uh, that is A-OK -okay at Butler, and I absolutely encourage you to look into our exploratory studies program. Um, while it's not a requirement for all majors, 75% of our students will complete at least one internship before they graduate, and many of our students will take advantage of our location in the city of Indianapolis for those internship experiences, but we will have others that will um, do an internship through one of our um, programs based in Washington, D.C. or New York City. And then, of course, our students love campus in Indianapolis, but we do have 40% of Butler students who spend at least one semester studying abroad through one of our 200 plus programs in 60 different countries. So Butler has a very fun and vibrant campus community. Um, we are a residential campus with a three-year housing requirement. We recently built two new residence halls, uh, one that is for first-year students and one for sophomores with that focus on suite style living. We have 130 plus clubs and student organizations, a really active Greek life with about 35% of students participating. We have 20 NCAA Division I athletic teams and we're a part of the Big East Conference. Um, one fun fact for our sports fans out there, you do get free tickets to all of the sporting events, and that'll include um, men's basketball, which is certainly a big deal on campus. And then there are several club sports, intramural sports as well. We do have a very active diversity center, uh, which is the hub of all of our student affinity groups. Um, so that'll include our Black Student Union, Latinx Student Union, uh, gender equity movement, um, to name a few. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, Butler is located right in the city of Indianapolis, which certainly provides some great opportunities for our students. Indy is the 17th largest city in the nation, so you're going to find all those things that you think of with major cities, athletic events, cultural events, arts, shopping, restaurants. Um, it is really a fun and vibrant city. Um, Butler is five miles north of the downtown area, which is what you're seeing pictured here. And there um, are a couple of different transportation options, so students can certainly go out and explore the city. There is a neighborhood just northeast of campus called Broad Ripple um, that really gives you kind of that college town type feel. So more local restaurants, cafes and boutiques, just a fun um, social area to be with your friends when you want to get off campus for a bit. Um, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk briefly as to what the admissions process looks like at Butler. And here you'll see your academic profile, which really gives you an idea of where a typical student is, um, academically speaking. So these numbers are our middle 50% ranges. Um, so the GPA is at 3.6 to about a 4.2, ACT 27 to 31, SAT 1200 to 1340. Um, for the GPA, we will use a weighted GPA. Um, so the highest GPA um, listed on your transcript. Um, and then do keep in mind that we are test optional. So these test scores that you're seeing are reflective of the students who chose to submit test scores um, last year, which was about 50% of our applicants. 
Um, here's a quick list of all the items that are necessary to complete your application. Um, there is no app fee, so it is free to apply. And you can use the Butler app or the Common app, although you'll probably find the Common app to be much easier, um, particularly if you're applying to multiple schools who are also on the Common app. Um, we do need then your essay from the Common app, an official transcript and school report. And then again, those last two items are the optional ones. So test scores you can choose to apply with or without, and then resume and letters of recommendation. Here are all the important dates to keep in mind for Butler's application process. Um, it will open up August 1st as you head into your senior year, and then two different timelines that you can follow with early action, a November 1st date, and then regular decision is that February 1st date. Um, with both, you're gonna be automatically reviewed for merit scholarships, um, but with early action, you'll have the opportunity to apply to a few other scholarships that'll include our Morton Finney Diversity Leadership um, Award and our Center for Faith and Vocation. Looking a little bit at our cost here, you can see tuition, housing and meals and fees adds up to about that $60,000 of total direct costs. Um, so just wanted to share that briefly. Very few are paying that because of all the different scholarship opportunities. Um, so that goes up to 24,000. And then we definitely encourage you file the FAFSA for any additional need-based aid. So thank you so much. It was my pleasure being here with you today and I'm gonna turn it over. Thank you, Butler University. All right, just a reminder to keep putting your questions in the Q&A for our panelists, and they are continuing to answer those questions. And next we have Rose Holman, Rose, excuse me, Rose Holman Institute of Technology. Well, good day to everyone. I'm glad you were able to join us. Glad to have the Noble Network here with us. Dexter Jordan talking from Rose Holman Institute of Technology. We are a uh, school in Terre Haute, Indiana, and we have a student population of 2,200 students, uh, a 13 to 1 professor student ratio. We average 20 students a class. Uh, we specialize in STEM education, and we have a wonderful opportunity for our students to do a lot of hands on work in the laboratories here on our campus. Um, here are some more numbers for you about the school. You can take a look at our uh, number of majors. We have 18 different major areas of study that you can go into. Uh, some are unique, including optical engineering and engineering design. A uh, very small grad school, less than 100 students. Four of our engineering majors have been ranked number one in the country and our uh, number one ranking for the last 23 years, according to U.S. News and World Report, has been maintained. So we are uh, very good at what we do, and we really enjoy doing it. This Excuse is one me, of my... Rose, Rose Holman, did you want to screen share? I did, most certainly did. It didn't show, it's not showing? No. Okay. Let me try again. For some reason, it is not. Let's try here, screen, share. Great, there you go. Is it showing now? Yes, it is, you're all set. Okay, excellent. So we have um, these major areas of study here and it's a nice area uh, for you to take a look at. We have uh, STEM majors, so we have to make that clear. Uh, this is all we do. And so students have to be sure uh, when they're looking at a Rose home and that they're interested in science, engineering, math, um, technology in those areas. And once again, uh, we have a pretty good time uh, with these areas here. One of the great things about Rose Holman is the teaching part of it all. We really enjoy teaching. All of our classes are taught by faculty, so no teaching assistants, no graduate assistants. 99% of our faculty have their PhD or their terminal degrees in, in their area. We have a wonderful open door policy that allows you to ask questions, get uh, uh, help from faculty, and also be advanced in your learning. So that is something that really makes us unique uh, among uh, top ranked engineering schools in the country. And our faculty do everything that normal faculty do, write textbooks, uh, consult with companies, uh, do research, but they really are dedicated to teaching. And we wanna give you some attention and make sure you are able to learn the things that you need to learn to be successful once you leave Rose Holman. 
we don't want you to work, 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 work all the time. So we do have a lot of activities, clubs, sports that are available to you, over 80 different clubs and activities. That's a lot for a small school. And it's uh, surprising when you look at our school and you see how involved our students are in performing arts. They love to sing and dance and play instrumental or vocal music. So it, they are really involved uh, in the arts here. We have intramural sports. We're a Division three school. We have 20 uh, NCAA Division uh, three uh, teams that men and women can participate in. We also have various clubs and organizations. We have fraternities, sororities. Uh, competition teams are big here. We have four robotic teams and four racing teams, a makers club, uh, various types of, of competitions that our students participate in, not only nationally, but globally as well. So it's a really nice opportunity for our students to have some fun here. And of course, the Makers Lab uh, is what the students like to go into as they work on their own projects. So it's a really good place to be if you're a tinkerer. One of the foundational uh, principles of Rose Holman is that you should get what you came to school for. So we have a wonderful 99% uh, job placement this past year. Our students are all assigned a career advisor. We have paid internship co-ops and research experience all over the nation. Uh, we have a lot of companies that come to our campus to recruit our students. And so uh, they are sought after uh, in, in industry. And uh, it's a Rose Holman is one of those you're not going back home again type schools. We have some summer programs for those who are sophomores and juniors. We have a uh, Rose Power, which is a STEM camp for females, Project Select, which is for uh, freshmen and sophomores, and is a residential program. Creation Crates is something that we will mail out a big crate, a big box of stuff to you <laughs> that you can work on, and you'll be working on that with faculty. And then Operation Catapult is our foundational summer of catapult summer program where students will be here on campus, and that is for high school juniors. So let's talk about how to be admitted into Rose Holman. Here's our application timeline. August 1st, our applications are up and running each year. November the 1st is our early action uh, deadline. It is non-binding, so gives you a chance to apply and be admitted to the school and compete for our scholarships. Then February 1st is our regular decision uh, application deadline. And because neither one are binding, we will not expect your decision until the 1st of May. Uh, but you can make your decision before then. Uh, we'll be glad to take it. This is what we need for completion of your application. We are in a common app. We also have our own application. High school transcripts. We look for all A's and B's, please. Standardized test scores are optional again this year. We took the SAT or the ACT. You can turn those in if you think they're going to help you. Then we need a letter of recommendation. Just make sure it's someone that knows you and likes you. And that second part is really important. Uh, they can give you a nice glowing recommendation. The classes we need are four years of English, four years of math, two years of the social sciences, one year of biology, chemistry, and physics. If you have a problem in fitting those classes in your schedule, please give us a call and we'll help you look at options to make sure you can meet those requirements. We do have scholarships and financial aid available to all of our incoming freshmen. We have grants and scholarships that we will award to our students with a holistic process. So we look at your classes taken, grade point average, test scores, if you submit them. We do read your essays and your recommendations, and those will play a role uh, in your scholarship awarding. So uh, that is something to be aware of. We have a wonderful Noblet Scholars Program where students receive four-year scholarships, but also have an opportunity to uh, work with faculty closely and deal with alumni, alumni in their various areas. Here's our contact information, and I also put our contact information uh, in the chat so you can uh, contact us with questions or inquiries or even make a visit to campus. Once again, we're in Terre Haute, Indiana, three hours uh, from Chicago, St. Louis, and Louisville, one hour west of Indianapolis. And I'm going to stop my share now and turn it back over. Great. Thank you, Rose Holman Institute of Technology.
Um, that is all we have as far as the presenters with us today. Um, Central Michigan University was not able to join us. So I would ask all of our presenters to continue to answer the questions in the Q&A, but also join me back on video. And the question we're gonna have everyone answer is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we will start with the University of Arizona. Great question. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice that I could give is to make sure to explore all your options, big, small, medium, close to home, far away. You really never know what's going to be the best fit for you. Even if you think you know exactly what you want, um, it might not be what you want if you compare it to other options. So definitely um, get out there, explore what's available to you because you never know what's going to be the best fit. Great. University of Missouri. I think one of the biggest pieces of advice I have um, is to stay in contact with people like us. Um, we are the representatives of our universities, so we are going to have all the answers for you. And if we don't have them, we're going to connect you with the people that do have the answers. So if you ever feel like you don't know what move to make next, reach out to a representative, even if it's maybe not necessarily for their institution, we all have connections with each other as well. So we can get you in contact with whoever you might need to be in contact with. And the University of Iowa. Yeah, my piece of advice is to get organized. When you're receiving all of this information, find a method of how you like to keep track of all of that information, whether it's an online living document or a planner or a notebook. You're going to have different login information for the various schools you apply for, for the Common App, for the Coalition App, all these sorts of things. So if you can keep everything in one central place, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And Butler University, what's your piece of advice? Yeah, um, mine is going to be think outside of the box. This is your college search. It's not your brother, your sisters. It's not your best friend's college search. It's your college search. Um, so explore colleges maybe that you haven't heard of. Um, there are a lot of amazing colleges and universities out there. So um, I encourage you to, to just be brave. Look at new, interesting things that you think are going to be a really great fit for you because um, this is your process and have fun with it. And Rose Holman Institute of Technology, your advice? The biggest advice I would have for students going into the college search process is really uh, uh, to coin the phrase, to thine own self be true. Know who you are, know what you like, know what you don't like. Uh, if you don't like uh, big crowds, then maybe you shouldn't look at a big school. If you love to be involved and love the giant atmosphere, uh, then you should look at big schools. But also know who you are as far as choosing your major. Uh, if you're undecided, then you need to look for a school that offers several majors that you might be interested in. If you're focused on one major, that's fine, but uh, don't feel the pressure to have to really select something that you're going to start your career off and uh, figure out what you like and don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at, uh, and that really will help you to decide what major area of study to choose. Okay, our next question is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? The University of Arizona? have to say that you need to know exactly what you want to major in when you enter as a first year student. That is definitely not true. Um, don't put that type of pressure on yourself. Specifically at Arizona, Undecided is our second most popular major. So students can come into um, the college experience, maybe not sure exactly what they want to do, explore different options based on your interests, your strengths. Um, we have to, uh, Most colleges have resources to help support you and determine which major is best based on your goals. So don't put so much pressure on knowing exactly what you want to do when you're applying to college. University of Missouri? I would say on that similar like train of thought, if you do go in knowing exactly what you want to do, and then maybe you hear from other universities or other programs that interest you, you're allowed to change your mind. Um, you might start your senior year knowing exactly where you want to go and what you want to do, and then maybe you go on a college tour or you sit through a visit at your high school, and you're like, wait a minute, I think I like that better. Um, it's okay to change your mind. This is going to be a long process throughout the next couple of months and year. Um, as you really make those final decisions. So keep your options open. Um, you don't have to know exactly what you want right away. And the University of Iowa. 
Yeah, I think a common myth is that it's more expensive to go to college out of state. Um, that's not necessarily the case. All of our schools are going to offer some sort of scholarship opportunities. Um, there's, of course, scholarship opportunities to apply for within your communities as well, as well as national search sites. And the more proactive you can be about working with our admissions offices, talking about finances, doing your best in high school to get those grades, um, there may be some real financial incentives to go out of state. Butler? Oh gosh, they've already taken a lot of good ones. Um, I would say this one's a little bit more specific to like the application process. So as you're going through the application process, um, you will be listing your extracurricular activities, the things that you've been involved in. Um, and I sometimes hear from students who don't list anything that they didn't because they have family responsibilities. Maybe they're taking care of younger siblings or they have a part-time job. Um, those absolutely count, and you can certainly include those um, on your application. And Rose Holman Institute of Technology, here, the myth you'd like to debunk. I'm going to piggyback on uh, not being able to afford a college. I, I often tell students to apply to their dream schools and, and medium sky size or medium choice schools and small schools. Just apply to see what happens during the scholarship awarding process. All schools have scholarship money that they do want to award to incoming freshmen. So apply, uh, do the math, see if, if it's something that you can afford or handle and then make a decision after that. But don't, don't, uh, not, don't, don't limit your options in, in as far as what kind of schools to go to. Okay, and lastly, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school as we're wrapping things up today? Let's start with the University of Arizona. That is a great question, and it's really hard for me to decide on just one thing. Um, but if I had to summarize Arizona, it would be that we offer the best of both worlds in terms of academic opportunities, success for what happens after college, but also providing you with that real um, traditional college experience, that social opportunities while you are in school, making lifelong friendships, really trying new things. Um, the University of Arizona can offer you the whole package, um, really has a lot to offer in terms of A to Z. Uh, so if you're interested in a big school with big time opportunities, please consider the University of Arizona. University of Missouri. I was gonna say, I feel like none of us are gonna be able to pick just one thing because I think there's plenty of things that make each of our universities and colleges unique. Um, but I'll, I'm gonna say two. Um, the first one um, being just the way that our students are highly involved in our campus, whether it's going to be in their specific degree programs, getting internships, whether it's in our community, whether it's in their clubs and organizations, whether it's on our sports teams, cheering them on or actually participating in them. Um, you are seeing students doing more than just going to class. They're going to be uh, really involved in things in and around campus and our community. And then the second one I always like to just bring up, especially for those out-of-state students, is our residency process. Um, it is one of the easiest ways for those out-of-state students to save money. So kind of going off what um, Aaron and Dexter were saying earlier about finding a way to make those out-of-state schools be a little bit more um, cost effective for you, that residency process is going to be awesome for our students. Great, the University of Iowa. Yeah, one thing's really hard. Um, I will focus on our students being really collaborative and explorative. So no matter what they come in with their vision of what they want to study, you are able to get involved in whatever drives your passions or new things you might want to explore and try as well. So if you're a music major, you're not limited to only studying music all the time. You may be pursuing an arts entrepreneurship certificate. You may be in intramural basketball. You may be doing research with our libraries. You can get involved in whatever you may want to explore. And when you're in college, there's so much new that you're exposed to that you might discover new passions um, and opportunities that change kind of your career um, sites as well. Hey, Butler, can you give us one thing real quick? Yeah, oh, I'm um, here. Our students in the Butler community is just such a welcoming and caring place um, with so many amazing people who look out for one another and support one another. Okay, and Rose Holman, can you give us one thing real quick? Sure, family. Uh, we really care about our students. 
Great. Well, thank you for joining us today, everyone. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd really appreciate any feedback you can provide. This is our last session for today. You'll be able to find this session's recordings as well as all of the other recordings at strivescan.com forward slash noble. And thanks again for joining us.